Uh, we want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who came out today, and we know that people will be coming uh, this evening as well, and, and even tomorrow evening. Uh, as we join our country, good-hearted people, uh, people of faith, uh, people of goodwill throughout this country, and being completely outraged, quite frankly, uh, and the decision by the jury uh, in Sanford, Florida, Florida, as it relates to the, uh, the, the trial of George Zimmerman. Uh, for us, this is reminiscent, quite frankly, of the murder of Emmett Till uh, in the 1950s, quite frankly. Uh, a jury, an all-white jury, uh, makes a decision uh, not to make a conviction uh, in, in, in the murder of a teenager who came from Chicago, who was just visiting, uh, who came, came up, for, who lit, was born originally in the state of Mississippi. And so we are reminiscent of the murder of Emmett Till. Uh, we also uh, reflect back on the execution of Troy Davis not long ago, again in the state of Florida. Uh, we believe that people, George, I'm sorry. We believe that people throughout this country who are concerned about freedom and justice don't just look like myself. They're not just African American people. They are poor people, working class people, people of different ethnicities, people of different hues are extremely concerned about this atrocity. And as long as these type of atrocities are allowed to take place and nothing happens without consequence, uh, it sends a message. It sends a vicious, evil message. Because if Trayvon himself would have committed such a crime, we are confident that he would have been charged not with just with second degree murder, he would have been charged with first degree murder. Uh, for us, it is an outrage that not even a manslaughter charge was given irregardless of what the jury had to weigh. Our contention is, quite frankly, that an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We believe, quite frankly, that uh, if we are going to have a criminal justice system, that this criminal justice system might, must be equal and balanced across the board. Uh, we wouldn't have necessarily have a problem if the situation was that if, uh, if, if, if Trayvon were to have committed a crime and if Zimmerman committed a crime, if the consequences were both for both were equal. But what we know as a result of the way that things happen in this system today is that that is not the case. Uh, black and brown people and poor people are outraged right now. We're not just outraged, quite frankly, because of what happened in the Trayvon Martin case, but we also look at the Voting Rights Act that took place just a couple of weeks ago. And what we see is that there's a consistent pattern of stomping on the rights and privileges of working class people and poor people and people of color in this country. And it's happening at the hands of the judiciary system and of the political system that we unfortunately have to subscribe to. We pay taxes to this system. Uh, we, we subscribe to this system. We vote for elected officials who serve in this capacity. And we see this same system not representing the interests of working class people and people of color uh, and people that fuel our economy and make our communities thrive. And so we are here today to stand in solidarity with folks that are here because this grouping was the same grouping that organized the original Trayvon Martin march. And we had reservations, quite frankly, at that particular time that justice would be served, but we operated in good faith. We operated in good faith because of what we were taught and what we read about in school, what we believe uh, in our hearts to be true. Uh, myself and my family, we are preparing to go to church, and we will be praying for the family of Trayvon Martin. But we will not only be praying for the family of Trayvon Martin, we're going to be praying for this country. The Bible says that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And we are con we're concerned today about the moral and spiritual character of a country that could allow a child killer and a murderer to go free. We're concerned about the fact that this takes us back not just the black community, not just poor people, not just working class people, but it takes this nation back some 50 years. And we say enough is enough. And we say it not just with our breath. We say it not just with picket signs. We're going to say it with our actions. And we believe that in the days and weeks ahead, people throughout this country are going to say it with their, with their actions. And before I close up, let me say this. I'm hearing a lot of people talking about peace. We have to be very, very careful what we ask for when we ask for peace. I'm not promoting violence, but Dr. King said that peace is not merely the absence of tension, but the
presence of justice. And so as long as injustice prevails, there will be no peace. We say no justice, no peace, and as long as injustice prevails, there will be no peace in this country. So we thank you so much for coming out. We encourage you to continue to come out because we are not going to stop fighting. For us, this is a life and death issue. We understand that our children are being hunted down, whether it's by the police uh, in this city, or whether it's about quasi-police, or whether it's by people like George Zimmerman who want to be the police. Zimmerman was not operating in an official capacity. He had no justification whatsoever to put his hands on Trayvon Martin. So we say thank you and thank you for coming out. God bless you. Brothers and sisters, I want to be very brief. I'm not only speaking as a representative of Baltimore People's Power Assembly, which I want folks to know that the, the origins of that organization, which the Southern Christian Leadership Conference is a part of, came out of the 10,000 person demonstration that took place here in Baltimore City on March the 26, 2012. It was at that demonstration that we voted to take on the issues of racial profiling, of racism, of police killings, of jobs and rec centers. There was an actual vote of the people and out of that the People's Assembly was formed. It was formed because a justice thing that transpired yesterday, the injustice of the system itself, the failure of the system to in any way, shape, or form represent the people of this country, whether it's City Hall, even though there might be a good City Council people here and there, the fact is that nothing's been done for people on the ground. My statement is really as a mother. One of the news reporters, I think, asked me a question, how did I feel about this? And I'm really speaking from the heart as a mother. I think every mother in this country has to be outraged when they allow a racist murderer to walk free on the streets of this country. In fact, what killed me was to watch them announce that they were going to give this killer his gun back when he left the courtroom. You know, you, you, it's just seeing that happen is enough to break your heart. And everyone, regardless of their nationality, needs to take a stand on this case because it could be anyone's child anyone could suffer this kind of heartbreak and injustice. So my heart grows out to the family of Trayvon Martin. I feel brokenhearted, but I think the answer is, as Reverend Witherspoon said, no justice, no peace. We have to keep the struggle going. Today For killing a dog, I'm speaking about Michael Vick, but yet George Zimmerman can, without provocation instantly kill a black youth for just going to the store and buy some Skittles. You know, we live in a country where somebody threw flour on Kim Kardashian and got arrested. But George Zimmerman shot Trayvon Martin and he got off. The people don't need no more Bernard Getzes. They don't need no George Zimmerman's. They don't need the slavery of private, private prisons. They need jobs. They need housing. They need health care. They need education. We need our rec centers open back up. Why is all this happening to the people right now? It's because they're on a, the, the rich ruling class society is at war. They're at war with the poor people in this country. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. The ruling class in this country is at war with the people. I'm also with the All People's Congress, and I just want to um, let folks know, um, give sort of uh, logistics. Uh, besides this press conference here today, we put out a call for people to come out the day after the verdict, and we will be here all throughout today but we expect even more people to come out Monday, tomorrow. And so we will be here just like we're, people are all out, are out across this country by the tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands demanding justice for Trayvon Martin.